Today we'll review the recommended process for cleaning and prepping your aseptic V-Drive for sterilization. All of your items should be dirty when they come out of the OR. And then you'll prep your solution for cleaning using a pH neutral enzymatic cleaner and warm water, along with your tools for cleaning. The appropriate tools for cleaning are provided to you with your kit and DeSuter approved lubricant. Soft nylon brush, a cannulation brush, Let's start with the handpiece. Always remove the battery and never autoclave your battery. Don't ever submerge your handpiece. Keeping the contacts as dry as possible is recommended, but you can remove the housing for cleaning if you desire. Water should always be gentle and low pressure and should always be run through the back of the handpiece, not the front. The front of the handpiece does have gaskets, bearings that help the motor to function properly. We can cause damage by using high pressure water or brushes here. Again, water should always be going through the back of the handpiece to the front. Use your soft nylon brush to clean your handpiece, removing any debris with your prepared solution. Make sure to get into all crevices and cracks and gently clean in the front of the handpiece where the bearings and gears are. Take special care to get into seams and tight to reach spaces around the triggers and buttons. Don't forget to clean your housing as well and use your soft cannulated brush to clean the cannula of your handpiece. Insert the brush into the back of the handpiece to the front gently and repeat the process until the brush comes out clean. Rinse your handpiece after cleaning with warm clean water. Again, if you're rinsing using a tap, rinse from the back. The process now needs to be repeated with all of your attachments. Clean and wash your housing and set that aside to dry. Using the nylon brush, you'll repeat the process with each attachment, making sure to open and accentuate each of these attachments. Use your soft cannulated brush to clean inside of the attachments and then rinse well with clean warm water. Make sure to clean in and around all of your set screws on your TPLO attachment. If necessary, these can be removed and put into your ultrasonic cleaner. Do not submerge or put any of your actual attachments into your ultrasonic cleaner. With your sagittal attachment, take care to open the attachment all the way so that the teeth that holds the blades is exposed. Use your nylon brush to clean into the teeth. Rinse with clean warm water and set aside to dry. When cleaning your pin and wire driver, make sure the attachment is completely open. Use your nylon brush to clean the outside of the attachment and in all crevices. Using your cannulated brush, clean the attachment from back to front. Now it's time to dry our equipment and get it ready for sterilization using a lint-free cloth.
If you haven't removed your housing already, you can go ahead and do so now. If you have a DeSuter sterilization basket, go ahead and place this in front of you and get it ready to fill it up. We'll also lubricate after drying, so go ahead and grab your approved lubricant. Making sure everything is as dry as possible before sterilization is imperative. Using an air gun is not recommended. Using the oil, use a drop of oil in the following places. Around the mode button, make sure to push your button back and forth to distribute the oil. Place a drop in each trigger and move the triggers back and forth to distribute the oil. You can also place a drop on the attachment release. On your sagittal attachment, using a little bit of oil where the teeth are is recommended. On your quick coupling attachment, you can also place just a little bit of oil. Make sure that you use only small amounts and distribute it well as using a bunch of oil can cause excessive buildup. On your pin and wire driver, you can use a little bit of oil on the hand trigger release as well as the front of the attachment. When you place your housing into the sterilization basket, Make sure that the housing is completely open. Place your TPLO attachment in as well, and your tray should look like this when you're ready to wrap an autoclave. Again, make sure that your housing is completely open and that your shield's included. Don't forget your indicator strip. Now our tray is wrapped and ready to go. There are a couple of different types of autoclaves available for use on the market today. One is a gravity and the other is vacuum assisted. Depending on which autoclave you have, that will dictate the sterilization parameters that you should use. You should always consult your manual to make sure you're using the proper sterilization parameters for your autoclave. We have a gravity autoclave here, so we will be using a wrapped tray, and we will use the parameters 15 minutes at 134 degrees Celsius, and a dry time of 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius. Final disclaimers and warnings. Do not autoclave your aseptic batteries. Housing should always be open and face down during sterilization. Use of a dedicated sterilization tray promotes best practice, facilitating appropriate drainage. Do not allow the load to continue to sit within the sterilizer after dry cycles complete.